got you. All right, so I'm here at Pierre. How you doing? Man? Good, man. What's going on, man? No, I'm, I'm doing great, man. Yes. Just, you know, it's great to see you here at this, at this wonderful event. Uh, just talk to me about what, what is Juan Pierre up to these days. What is Juan Pierre up to these days? Yes. I'm just chilling now. Uh, I was looking to play this year. Uh, nobody's called, so I've been playing over 13 years. So it's a little weird feeling. Yeah. I'm used to grinding right up on this stuff, so I feel like I should be doing some. But it's a season for me where the Lord is just dealing with me, just telling me to, to be be still right now. So I'm just waiting to see my next assignment. If it's baseball, if it's ministry, whatever it is. So I'm chilling right now, literally. Uh, <laughs> sometimes you need, you need some downtime. You were always one of the hardest workers in the major leagues when, when you did play. I uh, just talk about you know maximizing your potential. I feel like you're a great example of, of, of what somebody can become when they maximize the potential and they work hard day in and day out. Uh, without a doubt. Uh, physically, you see, I'm not that big. Uh, I played with guys, guys that were way bigger than me. But like you said, I, I gave it my all every time I stepped out on the field, uh, every time in workouts. Uh, I really uh, try to max my potential out in that way where I just went hard all the time and I just was a grind spirit about it. And, um, you know, once I got saved, I played about eight, nine years uh, before I got saved. And then once I got saved, I went even harder because I knew who I was representing out there. Uh, so it, it, the last four years of my career have been just awesome seeing the way the Lord has been moving in me. And um, I really took heart of uh, that scripture verse where it says, uh, work not unto men, but unto God. Exactly. Something like that. You know, I paraphrase it a little bit. But uh, that's the scripture that I went by every day. And that's why I think people saw the way I went about on the baseball field. Yeah, and you always, you always a class act on baseball for always a big fan of yours. Um, just, you know, most people know, would know you from that 2003 World Series yeah. team. It was an incredible group of guys. Yeah. Talk about that. Talk about that whole team. Um, it was it was unbelievable. Uh, that was 10 years ago, almost 11 years yeah. ago now. Uh, were you going through it? You didn't realize it, you know, but as the years have went by and I haven't won World Series, yeah. you realize how special that time was. We are all young. We were all were eager to play, have fun, joking around. There was game six of the World Series. We were in there playing dominoes before <laughs> the game, just chilling. Chilling out, man, and just relaxing. And um, I remember just the, the, the when we won and running in from center field, and I could remember like in little league, yeah. my mom and pops dropping me off to uh, practice, man, going to All Star game, the sacrifices all my family made for me to get to that point. And um, on the field, it wasn't a better feeling than that. Yeah, you guys, you know, you, it, 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 you, know, you guys just kind of slay the dragon. You make the big money in your game. <laughs> Exactly, uh, and, and, and winning it in New York. I remember I was going after we won, and we are going down to uh, Central uh, Manhattan, yeah. running down the street saying we're World <laughs> Series champs, uh, doing all that stuff. But as good as that experience was and is, and, and I cherish it, the day I gave my life to the Lord mm -hmm. blows that out of the water. Blows it out of the water, man. And I know people can say that and do it, but I truly know that in my heart, that that feeling, of giving your life to Christ and seeing him work in you and just change you yeah. from the inside out, bar none, the best best decision I ever made. I'm right there with you, man. I'm going to say what is you. Yeah. Um, you know, on that team, uh, there was a lot of great players on that team. Yeah. Uh, to talk about, you know, Miguel Cabrera. Oh, wow. He's a phenomenal player. To talk about like, what it's been like to see him evolve into one of the best players. Oh, a monster. He was a monster back then. He was 20 years old, and now he just signed for like $300 million. <laughs> uh, but he's one of the rare cats that, in the league, he came in hit and he never stopped. He's been hitting ever since, and he just got his 2,000 hit yesterday. Uh, just saw the potential in him, but you see that with some, you know, but he had that it factor where you knew it was like, this cat is special, man. And just to see him evolve into a man now, so when I used to play against him, and when I was with the White Sox, we played Detroit all the time, I was like, man, you're a grown man now. You got like three kids, you know what I mean? He was a kid when I first saw him, but uh, it's just unbelievable, man. And uh, Pudge was the anchor of that team, man. He just kept everybody together, but we had the, uh, my, one of my best friends in the game, Duntra, Willis burst on the scene. We just, it was just a fun loving group, man. I think that's why people, especially in South Florida, to yeah. hold to us because we're we're love, young and energetic. Exactly. That's basically what South Florida is. You put the characteristics of it. That's it. Oh, energetic city. That's it. Um, you mentioned giving your life to the Lord earlier. Um, how great, how great that is. Talk about the Beast Mode for Christ movement and, and what, what exactly you do with that. Um, Beast Mode for Christ was something I came up. We said it long before I said it, even before I got saved. It was like just going hard. You know what I mean? Whatever you did, whether it was uh, on the baseball field, basketball field. Before I got saved, cats hustling, you know what I mean? It was like going beast mode. But then once I got saved, I started reading the scriptures because I always, you know, Christian athletes always portray Jesus as soft, man. I'm like, man, these cats are soft, man. And I started reading about Jesus myself. I'm like, Jesus was a beast, man. Like, he wasn't, he wasn't soft by any means. So I was like, oh, I'm going hard for the Lord. Let's go beast mode for Christ. So that's how that whole concept came in the 24-7, 365 with the cross on the back of the shirt. It was just like no days off, man. You, you, you picking up that 
cross every day, no days off. But uh, going out and fighting, battling, as Christians, we got to do that. You know, we can't be soft and passive. We got to go like, do like Jesus did. Like I said, you're safe now. Mm -hmm. uh, you got this wonderful event. Uh, I know this is one of yeah. your best friends. Yeah. I saw a video on YouTube, uh, and it was with you on stage on the parade. And you were rapping. Okay, yeah. You still rapping? Can you yeah. kick something real quick? No, I don't rap. No, I don't rap no more. I learned my talent and my skill. You know, in the shower, I'm a beast. You know what I mean? But I still get. Uh, I made the not top ten plays in okay. Sports Center from ten years ago. People still that. giving me flack about rapping, yeah. but you know, in the spur of the moment, I did it. But you know. Uh, no, nah, I know my place now. I just sit and watch rap. Mm -hmm. All right, uh, Wolf here. Thank you, class thank act, you, as always. Always. All right, take care.